We should have a drone. Just yeah, think, no. you could be controlling a drone that's like. <laughs> 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 I think like corrosion of conformity up there, <laughs> high on fire, yeah. clutch. Clutch, I feel. Like, clutch oh has God, to be, clutch. clutch has to be like high up there. Yeah, very high. For tap boys. Oh, clutch. <laughs> you bit the nail on the head there, I think. It's a lot in a lot of tattoo shops. Um, yeah, like sleep, obviously. I don't know, I'm just. I hear Pantera a lot. Pantera, like. yeah, yeah, Pantera. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, th th there's some really obvious ones, but then like, I think a few that I'm sure Clutch. Are, not, normies don't know Clutch, I don't think, but they know Guns N' Roses and all yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. They exclusively get bumped at our tire shops. Yeah, that's their only revenue. I'm trying to think, what else we listen to in here? What? Westside Gun. Well, yeah, Westside Gun rap. He's <laughs> gun rap, basically. Yeah, everyone Coke wears rap. a metal shirt. You go to work and just exclusively listen to rap all day. That's all I like. yeah. <laughs> Check out my vintage Slayer shirt. Now I'm listening to Westside Gun all day. <laughs> I don't know what Westside Gun is, but I've probably heard it here today. Yeah, all right, yeah. okay. Is it a, it's a scene or it's a person? He's a person. All right. But he's got a lot. He's got like his own label and everything. I think it's Alex, very Alex good. Skepta. For... I was introduced to him fairly recently. <laughs> was he cool? And what's the other guy called? Dave or something? <laughs> There's a Dave. Dave. Yeah, Dave. No, it's yeah. just a guy called Dave. He was like, right. so he won like a Mercury Music <laughs> Award or something, yeah. didn't he? It's funny. <laughs> but his shit was like fucking heartbreaking, like about being yeah. fucking abused as a child and. Left by oh, his no, parents and stuff. Freaked. It's fucking <laughs> <laughs> I think that's him though, just Dave. It's like respect, at least he's not coming up with some fucking. Alright, I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone else has got to say, like David Bowie, or Bowie, he's, you know, he, he didn't transcend to just Dave. Just Dave. <laughs> but Dave. Yeah. Is Dave. Yeah, synonymous with the name Dave. Yeah. What makes it fucking difficult looking for him on Spotify? Yeah. As well, like he must have known that you can't. Have, that can't have been an afterthought. Like, oh fuck, you know, if you're just <laughs> going by Dave. <laughs> yeah, I f actually, I think I've been talking shit. I think rap music gets played in tattoo shops way more. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We're a little bit older, but me and Tony will always put on like, you know, Black Sunday by Cypress Hill, fucking standard. You know, Wu Tang, obviously. Yeah. the most oh, yeah. go to fucking you know grave diggers definitely and I'm, I'm not even into hip hop or rap at all really like I just know it because I've tattooed for so long <laughs> yeah like it sound transcends fucking being into rap or anything That's yeah it's not like, even yeah it's totally yeah. just it's own thing <clears throat> yeah I remember listening transcends. to that when I was getting this sleeve done actually I remember Listening to that, knowing what it was, of course, but this is like 20 years ago, more. But then also being introduced, like, listening to some stuff, and I remember they were playing Interpol in there, and I'd never heard them at the time, you know, I was like, oh, what's this? And they were like a New York band that were just happening, you know, and I was like, oh, cool, like, introduced to something in a tech shop. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's part of it, it's like, and we, you know, despite all of the standard stuff I've been talking about, We'd listen to some fairly obscure stuff in the shop, and people were always like, "Oh, what is this, by the way?" And I'd be like, oh, "This band called Slow Dive from the UK, or whatever." You know, like something that might not be quite. It's nice. It's listenable. It's very. It's mellow for the shop. Yeah. But it's also something that you know. I'll be like, we we'll play like Slow Dive or Catherine Wheel or something shoegazy like yeah. stuff like that that people are really just like I've never heard this before and it's 30 years old or whatever yeah yeah. it's good for the time you know and like you kind of need music like Slow Dive and I like them on New Order and stuff yeah. like that because it the p passage of time sort of changes a bit when it's especially when it's not as it's not like a, a single band you know they're not like oh I know this song I know this song I know yeah. this. You, you know you know it, the album yeah. but you don't know Oh, this like it's not like fucking Green Day or something where you're just like hearing twelve singles. Well, the, the the passage of time is never more apparent than when you put on an album that was part of your youth, and yeah. you're telling someone who was like, "I've never heard. Th who is this?" And you're like, 
fucking stone roses. <laughs> you know? And you're just like, I can't yeah. believe this person wasn't born when this album came out, of course. Like, well, how would they know who, you know, these guys are when they were fucking nothing? When, this, yeah. you know, they, were, they didn't exist when this band was big. We even put my put on Oasis or something in here and we put it on at 10 a.m. and then you sort of get your head down and you look up and it's three o'clock and it's still Oasis on yeah. it. But time has just gone. Yeah. <laughs> There's some bands that are good, good tat shop music. Yeah. We, we did that. I mean, I, I specifically recall this, listening to like that Unearth box set from Johnny Cash. It was like, oh, yeah. I mean, there was, uh, the CD box set was at least five discs and who knows, 30, 35 songs on each fucking disc or something. <laughs> and I remember specifically listening to that just all the way through in the shop one day. No one really complained either. It was just like, oh. Uncle I mean, Neil look, has got to be a, ba- a, ba- a music for a tat shop. Oh, which one? Uncle Neil. Fucking oh, Neil Young. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lucero, that's a pretty Lucero got both tattoo 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 band. Shops a lot. Yeah, yeah Lucero is probably a very heavy tat shop band. Yeah, tat shop bands. Black Sabbath. For sure. I think Deftones is the one, yeah. Well, recently, yeah. Fucking <laughs> <It's really laughs> hell with your Steam in your place. <laughs> well, no, me and Keenan just bump it like when we're at the shop on our own because we both know we. Well, Tony as well. We, we all really like Deftones. I mean, I know that was like. I've said it, it's like a bit of a guilty secret because they, they get lumped in with like Limp Biscuit and corn and stuff. And I, I heard the other day them described as horny corn. <laughs> horny corn? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like also you don't need to be like challenged by music while you're tattooing, you know? Like, no. Like, I don't mind listening to Mr. Bungle or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> which is fairly challenging music if you're not, if you don't know it, yeah. what it is. But it's like having to put on something that's like, if you're putting on like lightning bolt or fucking, you know, like somebody, somebody along those lines, it's a bit much, you know? It's like, You've got to read the room sometimes, yeah. obviously, and go, oh. Tony yeah. loves Ween, and I fucking cannot stand them. <laughs> I cannot stand Ween. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate that they're like a good band for what they do. Umpteen albums that are like better than, you know, most people trying to do that stuff professionally, and they're taking the piss. But then they're better than those people that are doing it professionally, like, or seriously. But I just can't stand them. I don't think they're, I prefer to listen to them because they're called oh, Ween. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't appeal it's to me. Like, yeah, I find them the hard first work. second of knowing about that band, you're like, I'm, I hate the name. That, and that band, <laughs> Have Heart, I don't think I've ever actually heard. Cause no, I don't know if I've ever heard them. I just hate them because of the name. So, like, something I, lo- I feel like I'll put on as a... And people always go, oh, I didn't know they did this song. Uh, it's Talking Heads. I'll put yeah, that yeah. on. And that's like so, a... Everybody's cool with <clears throat> that going on. I've never yeah. had anyone complain. Either. <laughs> yeah, you've also got to take into account that there's probably six people in the room and one of them's going to get well rubbed up the wrong way by whatever it is. Well, I'm just, I'm glad that no, nobody in my shop is a fucking Grateful Dead fan. Oh, God. Because <laughs> that shit, <laughs> does, it would not fly, I don't think, in our shop. I don't think I've ever had anyone put it on before as well. Like, nobody in the shop's like, oh, let's just check it out, see what it's like. Dude, I everyone knows what it's like. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't really, because I'm just, because I fucking hate, the whole concept of that band yeah. the, I, I really don't like the aesthetic that much as well like everything about them just like makes me think no I'm not going to even bother I was in my friend's car I was like oh yeah I've never really checked them out we were talking about all this shit I liked and it's like yeah the thing is is you don't want to listen to any studio album you want to check out <laughs> live stuff like, that sounds fucking <laughs> dog shit the idea is to Allow. listen to it it's supposed to read on tape as well oh, yeah, it's been recorded like, from a yeah, show I, and... and... <laughs> I like the imagery I've got to be honest and no, I love no, playing I should, I, with it I, yeah that, that, yeah I shouldn't say that because I've seen some posters and t-shirts and stuff on there it's pretty cool if they had a logo that would trash no one would care yeah well they've done like Mike SB shoes and everything recently haven't they really? yeah they had a whole range of Grateful Dead, SB, Dunks, Low, and they were gone like this, and they were revolting. They look yeah. horrendous. Well, who was the guy that joined them that everyone was pissed about? The uh, fancy guitarist. Yeah. Guy. I can't 
can't think. Ma- Mayer, John, John, John Mayer. Mayer. What's he famous for before he was in? Green New Glenn around on the guitar. I think. Is it? Yeah. That's all. He doesn't. He doesn't have his own. Isn't he was in the Chappelle show and shit. Yeah, he's on that. You know the one where they're in the barber shop and they and they're like doing all the da- and they got Quest Love on the drums. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, yeah. That's that is funny. It's, that's probably the best thing. He's that's so funny. <laughs> that's the thing you're missing out on is not having the fucking TV in the tat shop. Underrated fucking films or some I've shit. I've never worked in a tattoo shop with a TV. In no. it. Occasionally you go past. I've guessed. I've, I shouldn't say that. I've guested in shops that have TVs, but the only one that really comes to mind was Inksmith and Rogers Atlantic oh, Boulevard yeah, Boulevard location, where they each booth had its own TV. That's well, I remember on the Bowery in New York. There was def- uh, the first time I'd maybe been to New York. I'd walk down the Bowery. And there was a tattoo shop, and it had a TV in the window, and I think it was like a live feed of what was happening in the shop. <laughs> 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 I've seen that in Vegas because sure. it was just some like you know, like Spalding and Rogers, like you know what I mean. It was just something going on in the shop, and I was just like standing watching for quite a while. It was cool, you know. You, there was a whole like horseshoe of people stood around watching this TV on the Bowery. I think customers probably love a TV, but. To just to zoned out completely yeah. and just stare at moving objects. It, it would bum me out if, if I walked into a tattoo shop and there was a TV on. It would. That's some like headphone tattooer shit. Uh, yeah. That's that's something that I would. It'd be it'd be difficult for me to think of anything that I would fire somebody on the spot for. But walking into my shop and seeing any of my tattoos wearing headphones would be one of them. <laughs> I think I'd just be like, <laughs> you've got to get those the fuck off your head and get the fuck out of here now, like. When I see it at conventions and stuff, I, I almost just want to fucking rip them off someone's head anyway. It's just fucking ludicrous that that has become a thing. Yeah. Oh, how was that? T- oh, I was sick. It took 15 hours and he didn't talk to me at all. Sat and listened to fucking Joe Rogan or some shit yeah. the whole time. What else you got, Pod, Pod Daddy? What's your fucking questions? Is there anything we can jump... I don't know what I'm doing. It's, it's looking at me as like Mr. Pod guy. Wow. What do you mean? You're pod daddy. Poddington. <laughs> Poddington. <laughs> that's what, well, that's what, this is the second, and this isn't a podcast, but me and Sam did a podcast called Dungeon Punks. Yeah, Very I listened to it. Legit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was good for music. It was fun, yeah. Because I mean, you were talking about what you were listening to on your Australian Mark trip. Mark Kozilek, Sun oh, Kill Moon. Yeah. yeah, Sun Kill Moon and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's your tat shop. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Dude, it's great yeah. tat shop music, but then you'll be fucking in it, feeling great, yeah. doing a tattoo, mm-hmm. time's going fast, and your customers are just going to go, dude, what the fuck yeah. am I listening to? Yeah. Is this a guy just talking about his day? It is. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't even. Is he rapping? What the. I'd notice more that I'd be there and I'd be like, listening to it, and I'd be like, oh, it's a song about his dad. Oh. Yeah. And then I'd get like really taken out of the tattoo by just listening to the lyrics and stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some common themes in Sun Kill Moon. I don't know if you've known. School shootings. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of them. Yeah. Like, he's obsessed with school shootings. And he's obsessed with how much his band gets paid. There's a couple of others, but, like, th- those, are the, those are the two that I've picked up on. He's, you know, he's always kind of talking about uh, his dog. Man, I fucking love the last two. Like, yeah, I like the newer stuff more, maybe. I do. Like, the more weird and introspective and just out of control he gets with his day and his, like, <laughs> yeah. chat. The, maybe the not even like for it. the tat shop, but, man, when you're in the fucking airport or some shit, yeah. it's the greatest. Yeah, he's talking about travelling. And that's what that's what me and you sort of caught on to with that. The album's called This Is My Dinner. <laughs> and... The whole album's essentially about him moving from airport to airport and the struggle of staying afloat as an artist, as someone who has to move to stay relevant. Yeah. And there's a lot of parallels to tattooing with that, I think. You know, if you if you just substitute some of the lyrics for more tattoo-centric stuff, it's like essentially the same story. Yeah, talking about not being able to sleep in a fucking hotel room. Or you've got an audience that isn't particularly receptive. Uh, that, you know, you could have customers that are the same. It's like, 
all right, well, I want to be as excited, if not, I'm, I want to be just as excited about this as you are, but, you know, you don't, I can't read you very well, like, you don't seem to care <laughs> what I'm doing. Oh, that's the worst. It's, yeah, and I, the, the older I get, the longer I tattoo. I mean, my customers actually, age-wise, seem to be following me, like, I tend to tattoo people who are quite older, you know, like, 30 to 40, you know, seems to be like the most common age group I'm tattooing probably. Or like at least late 20s to late 30s. Um, it's very rare for me to be tattooing anyone like 18, 19 now. And when I am, I'm just like, I can't, I can't read their enthusiasm at all. I'll show them something and they're like, yeah, that'll do it. <coughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, fuck, like. I was stoked on this until about three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, we did listen to Prodigy a lot. <laughs> Prodigy? All that, like, yeah, it's real good, you get like this, we, we were bumping the Prodigy, weren't we? Yeah, I was, so, yeah. yeah. Well, they keep coming up, like, as well, for some reason. Everyone everyone gets oh, pretty animated yeah. about it. Like, even people who aren't Prodigy fans are like, oh, I remember this one. I wouldn't even class myself yeah. as a Prodigy fan, really. I think the last time I listened to them would have been seeing them. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. I saw them in 96 or whatever. Maybe the last time I saw them, 96. Then me and Sam see them in, randomly, see them in New Zealand last year. And we also see their last ever show. Holy shit, like, I didn't realise I was such a Prodigy fan, like, being at their last yeah. ever show. But it was, it was good, though, wasn't it? Like, it's a good thing about going places is that I, the prodigy were playing in my town I wouldn't have given a fuck yeah oh God. I don't think I would have even known it I wouldn't have even known where oh I'm in these weird places and everyone's going and doing this thing let's check it out it ends up being like this great memory or this fun thing you did well this, you the whole did. city was going to that show like it yeah. seemed like everybody in Auckland was going to see the prodigy that <laughs> night and we didn't really have an <laughs> option we were just like Guess swept along with it <laughs> cool Fight in the crowd sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not, <laughs> but we were also mistaken for the prodigy in the airport earlier that day. Nice. <laughs> but no, I think he just saw tattoos and was, you know, he was just like some kid and he just saw the tattoos and was English like, oh, like come, come, and yeah, come with us, you're with the prodigy. I mean, I don't think he thought we were in the prodigy. But I think he thought that we were like road crew or some shit like that. Oh, I mean, yeah, I could go all ways yeah. with music, like... You want me to talk about power electronics and harsh noise? I can do that. You want me to talk about the <laughs> soundtracks and make you feel like you're going to have a fucking panic attack while you're getting your ass cheek tattooed at two in the morning? Yeah. All right on the fucking edge. Well, no, mo I mean, movie scores is movie scores is an underrated touch up, yeah. Theme. I mean, you know, we'll, you know, if you're talking about Hans Zimmer or. Christopher Nolan, uh, sorry, yeah, like Hans Zimmer scores for Christopher Nolan movies or something like that. It gets intense because you're you're already getting tattooed, you're already in a pretty compromised position. Then you're being distressed by music where it sounds like something's about to happen any second, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something dramatic, <laughs> you know. That's why I can't listen to hardcore when I'm working. Just like it's bad enough that you're getting your ditch tattooed or whatever, that getting screamed at at the same time yeah. is just a bit much. Whereas you're like, oh, what's especially really usually quite built building or like an intro is like very dramatic to, or like fucking here we go, oh yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why the score, that's why a, a movie score is actually you know especially if it's someone like Michael Levi or something like that where it's like a bit more mellow like electronic sort of stuff I don't know like I we've got our favourites and stuff that we've tested in the shop and it's gone quite well I think in the end maybe like Tron sound yeah right, exactly like, like that Daft Punk yeah. is a great tattoo shop yeah. album to think of what like the ultimate tat shop like that's what I call tat shop music oh well, yeah I mean, I'm surprised <laughs> there isn't there, there maybe is on Spotify some sort of tattoo shop yeah. playlist <laughs> tat shack playlist yeah it's funny how though we've never, you know, I've never had interaction with you about, well, either of you about this, but there's so much common yeah. ground. Yeah. Well, it's like especially like Nick Cave and Warren Ellis's movie oh, score yeah. soundtracks. Like, they 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 probably now I've thought about it, they're probably like 
the ones that we've played in the shop like repeatedly. I mean, maybe you know it comes and goes, but like the soundtrack to the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford is like absolutely like Stunning. top, Amazing. top fucking music for music score that can be played in the tattoo shop or the well, the proposition. Even the later stuff like War Machine, I don't know if you saw that movie or no, but they did the that. they did the sound it was a Brad Pitt movie, but they did the soundtrack to that and it was killer. Um but not the road, that's a bit of a bum out. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> what colour do you want to do that? Oh, I don't fucking care. <laughs> We're all gonna die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this thing ain't gonna look like nothing in mm. hundred years anyway, uh, whatever. It can make or break like going to visit a shop as well. Like you walk in and something cools on even if you don't know it you're like i'm into this yeah i haven't got long left to rec- <laughs> quick one jazz music in tat shops does that fuck the vibe too much or it depends on how repetitive just because adventure to in nashville was it's a jazz house for sure like heavy and, and it can be it can be fine like i actually enjoy it because it, i'm often hearing stuff i've never heard before but then when it's just like, it just goes on and on and on yeah. forever. It's just like, it can become like a little bit too much and... It gets too all over the place. No, I mean... You just feel like you're going insane getting tattooed to that. If you're getting tattooed to it, I think it's... Doing tattoos and getting tattooed is obviously two very different things. But like, if you haven't... If you're subject to like... Like, Alice Coltrane while you're getting tattooed, like, it's pretty rough, I would expect. 